I'm an unofficial employee. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave it to you, Rick, to, uh, hey. to introduce Chris. Sure. So, so unofficial that he uh, he doesn't show up in any books anywhere. All right. <laughs> let's do it. I'm nowhere. Okay. You got it. Go. Are I we rolling? I brought, yeah, I brought the last one. Oh, yeah, we're still rolling? Just let me know when we're rolling. <laughs> we have been. All right. We've been rolling. All right. Taft Takeover Podcast here uh, with Alex and Jesus. End of the event. Cheers. You stumbled on into the Taft Takeover Podcast. Welcome back to the Tap Takeover Podcast. We've got a special live event for you guys here today. We're at the Summer Tent event here at uh, Antioch Here's, Fine yeah, Wines and Liquors. Yeah, yep, yeah. seventh annual. Sitting down with Rick, proprietor here, talking all about this amazing fest that you guys are putting on. Uh, what can you tell us? Well, we have 23 breweries out here today. It goes from one to five. We're tapping some rare beers on the hour. Uh, right now we have Cigar City White Oak Highlight on. Pretty cool. It's 25 bucks. $10 of that goes back towards a purchase at some point during the day. We're going to uh, raffle off some prizes. Overall, just a great, great event. And uh, we want our customers to come out and have a great time. Can you tell us how the event started? Just said, you know what, let's do something in the summer. Let's put a tent. We had a tent. We're like, let's just put it out there and see what happens. It it's started. summer and you have a tent. Exactly. We're like, you know what, let's do a beer tasting. If you build it, they will come. Exactly. Right? It started and it's kind of the way it worked. It started with like 40 or 50 people. I and mean, now it's grown into this, you know, a couple hundred. You know, it's a lot of our regular customers, which is awesome. You know, we try to keep the price down so they can come out and have a great time for, you know, fairly inexpensive price. I got to say, I was pretty impressed with the number of breweries and the, the quality of breweries that you guys were able to get. Plus, I've seen a lot of brewery reps out here. It's not just all volunteers pouring. You know, you get yep. to actually talk with some people who work at the breweries and uh, get the, the real lowdown about uh, about some of the beers you're tasting. It's exactly what I want to have is the brewery reps or owners out here because if you have somebody just pouring the beer that doesn't know about it, they're really just pouring beer. I want the customers to be able to uh, have their questions answered when they're at the table and you know, just sit and talk and talk beer with people and have a good time. That's what we're going to be about today is uh, sitting down, doing some interviews with some of these brewery reps, talking about what uh, what Antioch means to them. Tell us about some of the beers that they're pouring. Speaking of which, uh, do you have some favorites for us? I haven't actually had the White Oak Highlight. I think that's a pretty cool idea. The White Oak Spirals, they add some vanilla to the beer. So, And we've had it on the shelf. I just haven't brought one home yet. So I'm, I'm going to get over there and try that. Nice. We also have your beer. Oh, oh Sour Sour Not Fail. That's yeah. the last rare draft. So I'm really excited to have that. Uh, we actually have 12 bottles for sale the only case we got. So uh, I'd say those are the two that I'm pretty excited about trying today. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So besides this big event, uh, what other events do you guys have coming up uh, rest of the year? Yeah, so we have like sporadic wine tastings throughout the year. We do raffles for rare bourbons. Uh, you can actually go to uh, AntiochWine.com and you can see a lot of our events going on. Also our Facebook page as well will show all of those things. Put out weekly emails as well. Uh, there's an email collector on our website at AntiochWine.com. So if you sign up for that, you'll get the emails to tell you everything that's, uh, that's going on. I also do my big winter beer tasting that you guys are out at. Oh, yeah. uh, that's in between the championship games and the Super Bowl every year. Try to keep it steady, you know, that same time. There's really not a lot going on, so uh, the turnout's been great. Beer's unbelievable. We do Bourbon County, multiple years of that, other limited beers. So yeah, man, we got tons of things going on all the time. So check us out on social media and our, and our website, and that's how you find out about all the things. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, we hope you, you join us with uh, some of the brewery reps today and uh, yeah. maybe pop in for an interview. But, uh, yeah. yeah, thanks for giving us a little preview of what's to come. Yeah, no worries, guys. I also have a pretty cool beer I'm going to bring by, too, later. Sit down with right. you guys. Uh, one you guys probably could guess based on when you guys are out at the winter tasting. Okay. I'll let you guys uh, think about <laughs> okay. that. But then also I got another one I think you guys will really enjoy, too. Awesome. Uh, so I'll be back All around right. some okay. point to, uh, to share that there. with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All, right. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Appreciate cheers. it. All right, we're back at uh, Antioch's 7th Annual Summer Tent Event, and we're here, Sean, with the uh, the Canarchy, right? Yes, Canarchy, a craft brewery collective. Exactly, exactly. That's right. Tell us, how long have you been involved with Antioch at this event? You're pretty recent to this, right? Well, so I've been with Canarchy now for almost two years. We represent Oscar Blues, Cigar City, and Perrin Brewing here within the, the Illinois market. But we also have four other breweries that are underneath our partnership, Squatters and Wasatch out in Utah, Deep Ellum out of Dallas, Texas, and uh, three Weavers out of Southern California. So we represent seven different breweries across the country currently. This is my first time here at their summer tent event, but I'm certainly not a stranger to Antioch Liquors as this is one of our larger accounts here in Illinois. So we're very thankful and happy to be here. 
Now, specific to this event, you brought something that's available recently in the market, right? Yes. We have Cigar City's White Oak High Lie. So it is a very, very popular and sought-after beer. So we basically have our base beer of High Lie, which is the number one selling craft six-pack in America currently, which is pretty incredible because we're only in 17 markets. But this is a specialty version of it. So we age it on uh, White Oak Chip spirals for about a month to six weeks and because of that you get a nice vanilla coconut texture that comes out of it almost get a little bit of a honey thing going on you get a really nice kind of oaky wood quality so it doesn't doesn't up the abv on it but it really helps just kind of with the soft delicate nature of it so this beer is absolutely delicious it just launched just a couple weeks ago and we got a very small amount of draft and a, a very small amount of package as well. So Antioch as being one of our best supporters when Rick had asked us, you know, what, what we want to pour for this, there was really only only one answer and that was the white oak highlight. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff going on here, man. Yeah. It's like very yeah, so What do you guys think about it? When, when we talked to Rick, he, uh, he specifically mentioned this one as one that he was looking forward to trying. He said it's been on the shelves for a little bit now, but he hadn't gotten to take any home, so he's really looking forward to trying it. Well, I'll tell you what, if you get the chance, this is a delicious beer. Yes. High Lie is already delicious on its own. Yes, it is. And like you said, those little bit of vanilla coconut flavors. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real subtle, but it's real it's good. It's soft. It's delicate. This is this is a sexy beer for sure. And at a comes in a four-pack. It, it, it is available here at Antioch Liquors and throughout a lot of the larger off-premise liquor stores that you can think of within the Illinois market so if you have a chance pick it up because it tastes pretty darn good right now so there's just a lot of stuff going on yeah in this and, you know and it, it almost you get more and more out of it with every sip it definitely oh, yeah. tends to the first sip get a little bit of that wood quality on the end and then the second I get a lot of coconut on the nose so yes. uh, there there's certainly a lot of great beer in the market and there's a lot of brewers locally and nationally they're doing a lot of great things but I can certainly say that this beer lives up to the hype and we're very happy that it's here within the market so the fact that you represent a number of different breweries I think you can kind of give us a an interesting perspective on the beer market as it stands now what uh, what sort of trends do you see happening and what what sort of trends do you foresee going forward again just to kind of touch on what Canarchy is being a craft brewery collective. We do represent three brands here within the market. We have a local brand from Michigan, we have a brand from Colorado, and now we have a brand from Florida. In in particular, this market is just exploding with local. And that that's not new to, you know, the national craft beer presence by any means. Local is definitely very, very popular. But the dogfight is getting more real every day. And you, it, not only have we seen, unfortunately, smaller breweries that have you know, kind of gone the way of old yeller, if you will. Um, but <laughs> some of the national ones too, some of the larger breweries, some some real shocks that have kind of happened over the last couple of months. So the dogfight is real. People are very into local and want to support local, but the craft consumer is no longer loyal to their brand. I mean, people who would have been, let's just say our father's age, would have been local to a to a beer or two that they, they walk into a, you know, a, a world-class store here like Antioch Liquors, but they know exactly what they're going to have, where the drinker these days is way more educated. They're looking at dates, they're looking at flavor profiles, and they're looking at many different factors in what they choose. So stylistically, right now, I would definitely say that the haze craze is real, that New England-style IPA that those guys out out east have been doing for years is, is real here. I do have to say that Chicago is is pretty cool with with their idea of calling it a haze a hazy ipa i like to think of it as you know kind of that cloudy opaque uh, juice bomb but it's real and people have gotten onto that train people want different ones they want fresh and you know it's the trends are are changing i i was with the head brewer of Pollyanna last night at, at an event and he had a brute style ipa which i had just kind of recently seen on i've been on seeing Instagram. these recently yeah hadn't hadn't tried one yet wasn't really sure what it is and it was a brute new england style with it had like a peach bellini kind of texture to it needless to say it was very tasty and maybe the brute is next i know the milkshake craze is real i mean that's definitely a thing yeah i don't know the it's 
I would say for my preference, I'm more of that kind of West Coast style, traditional IPA, super hoppy, but a nice malt Hop build heavy, yeah. on, the, on the back end. But I'm certainly open to, I'm, a, I'm an equal opportunity drinker, if you will. <laughs> there are very, very popular styles. And, you know, all, all these brewers are not, they're not just experimenting for the hell of it. They're, they're brewing these beers because the demand is for these New England style IPAs, for these pastry sauts. I mean, I, I saw a beer recently where they had, they were using, I think, fried chicken oil. Some of the guys over at Microphone were doing something crazy the, like the that. The hot and, chicken beer. You yeah, know, and like, hey, crazy, but more might power just work. to them. Yeah. If people want it, make it, you know? <laughs> so it's with the beer that, that we're making and distributing nationally, we, we haven't necessarily tied into that yet. We are making a lot from our kind of brewery-only releases, you know, taproom exclusives. Perrin is experimenting with a number of New England-style IPAs. Yeah, I mean, the trend of that hazy beer, especially here within Illinois, is very, very popular right now. Yeah, and there was a, there's one thing you touched on that I, I kind of want to double back on, which is the fact that the, the beer consumer needs to be a lot more educated these days because there's so many options out there. It's not like you're just walking in and your options are Bud Light, Miller Lights, you know, and that's about it. You, you've it's almost overwhelming and you know i think it's it's one of the 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 purposes that our podcast serves is trying to let people know what things taste like what what you should be looking for what's hot what's not yeah. and so i think that it's really nice sitting down with you and kind of getting your impression of what uh, what sort of trends are hot right now but it is a weird time because like you said an old timer would say i'm a miller light guy sure i'm a bud bud light guy i'm a budweiser guy and now it's like, it's actually cool to experiment, but with that, it's like you're kind of thinning everything out, you know? It's, the it's tough. beauty of it, too, is that for that domestic style drinker, someone who's used to a domestic lager like a Miller Lite, like a Bud Light, there are so many craft brands that are making world class Pilsners mm-hmm. with, you know, American touches on it. So for someone who reaches for a Miller Lite, you know, from an Oscar Blues perspective, we can hand them Mama's Little Yellow Pills, Great which is a Czech style Pilsner that is just absolutely incredible. It is, it's right in their wheelhouse of being 4.7%, maybe a touch above what they're used to with, you know, 4245, but it has that, that quality and that nature of that kind of easy drinker, patio pounder that, that they're looking for. So, in terms of education, like you said, I mean, the consumer for some time now has has gotten to be more and more educated. Obviously, listening to podcasts like this and for, you know, reading all the information online, there's so much information online. And the other thing that's really incredible that has just ramped up over the last couple of years, the uh, trading market that goes on between brewery friends and traders across the country and though I, I don't really know the legality to it it is certainly nice to get beer from places that you can't get in your home market but that just people are interested in trying different styles and they want to talk about it it's a it's a whole you know culture that goes along with it the 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 beer share that you hear of of you know friends who may or not have known each other before are now friends because they try beer together and they sit around and talk about you know taste profiles and beer is different than than wine where i think it's a little bit easier to connect with that it's not like you have a beer and you say oh i get fresh cut grass and tennis balls <laughs> and you're like i don't know what the fuck that is sorry i, I don't know if i can no, say you that you can say whatever the fuck you want all right cool sorry <laughs> i don't know what that is but with beer it's you don't always have to taste the same thing, and I and I think that that also kind of leads to the educational kind of sharing connection aspect of it, where if I say I get coconut and you say you get honey, I'm like, well, do you like it? And you say, yeah, well, great. We're all, we're <laughs> all, all enjoying it, you know, yeah. together. So beer is increasingly more accessible to the masses. People who didn't used to be in beer are now interested in it. I mean, it, you know, turn around and look at some of the folks that are here may not have been here last year and probably certainly weren't here two years ago and that's that's not a knock at them it's really great that they've expanded their horizons that someone who maybe was a vodka miller light drinker is now drinking craft pilsners and new england style ipas and 
God bless him. Well, I, I think that's a that's a fantastic place to leave it right there. Cool. Really fantastic yeah. sitting down with you. We and, need uh, to revisit this again because yeah. you are very knowledgeable and um, thank you. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. It's a, you give us a great perspective from uh, you know especially dealing with all the different breweries that you are feet on the ground. You're seeing what the people are picking up. So hey, hey we I, really appreciate it. My pleasure. I do what I can do, and I appreciate your time. So awesome. Right. Thanks, Thanks Sean. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back to the Tap Takeover podcast here at the Summer 10 event at Antioch Fine Wine and Liquors. We are speaking with... I'm Tom from Collective Arts. We're really excited to speak with you. You guys have a really cool story, which we're going to get to, but you guys also have fantastic beer. And, you know, that's what we're all about on the podcast. We're doing a live tasting, as always. Tell us uh, about what we're drinking here. Yeah, so this is called Boy Oh Boy. This is, I like to call it the, one of the weirdest beers that we've ever made, frankly, I've ever had. It is a boysenberry, what we call breakfast sour with lactose. The way I describe this to, because it took me a long time to figure out how to describe this to, to people interested in it, and I kind of describe it as pie filling without the sweetness. It's got that, uh, that, that big fruit nose on it and really that kind of creamy finish to it, so really interesting beer. I love the sours where there is a fruit aspect to it that kind of takes away from the that adds some tartness to the sour you know so you get that nice interplay I have trouble when it's just a straight sour sometimes so this is the perfect sort of gateway drug sour for for my taste palette. I'm really loving the interplay between the the boysenberry. I actually thought it was raspberry at first. They're boysenberry, related. Delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Thank uh, you. Jesus what do you think of this one? No this is what we always talk about. We always do our little tastings and we talk about balance that sweetness tartness everything's perfect this is the gateway sour yeah, yeah. definitely this is the uh, the come to jesus sour yes exactly <laughs> exactly tell us about the brewery tell us about the story you guys have a really fun interplay between the artwork and the beer if you could uh, kind of tell us about that yeah, from Hamilton, Ontario, just outside of Toronto. If you look at our cans, one four-pack will have four different pieces of art. We do some really cool coasters as well that, that uh, mimic the can art. And the way that works is that anyone in the world can submit their art to us through our website. Every six months, we evaluate all the thousands of submissions we get from all over the world. And then we, we pick the ones that we like. One of our founders, along with a whole bunch of external you know, friends and volunteers who you know, aren't part of the brewery, go through and look at all the artwork and pick the ones they like. They pair them up with the beers that we make. And every three months, we rotate every single label and every coaster that we do. The most important part is that we pay every artist. We never take ownership of their work and we print their name and where they're from on the can and on the coaster as well. So we're trying to give those guys credit. We're trying to support that community. And in exchange there, we get these you know, really beautiful cans and you know something to look at, something that's different on the shelf. Yeah, that was a bit of a curveball for me because I like yeah. collecting the coasters. And when I went over there, you had like 20 spread out. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get all these. <laughs> Well, let's talk specifically about Antioch. How long have you been involved with this, and how did this come about? I mean, we started distributing here. You know, the brewery is about coming up on five years old. We started distributing here in October of last year, and, you know, Rick, guy who handles all the beer here, he is, he's just been a supporter of ours from day one. I mean, I think we kind of struck a chord with him and, and with the customer base here with kind of doing something that was a little bit different. You know, everyone makes good beer. There's so much good beer here today and, and on his shelves, but it takes a little bit something extra to be different nowadays. And, you know, that's definitely what the art does for us. The customers here really dug it right from right from the get-go, and over time it's it's grown leaps and bounds, especially here. I mean, uh, Rick just told me a couple minutes ago he's gone through almost 20 cases of our Liquid Art Fest Milkshake IPA, which is on draft inside right now, which is phenomenal. I can't complain about that. So wow. Yeah, I got to say, uh, one thing about Rick and about Antioch Liquors is they are uh, very good judges of talent. And I, I think they, they recognize very early on that not only does your brewery have talent, but your branding has talent. Uh, everything about the brewery is uh, it's got a fun story to it. Yeah. So you guys are putting out some fantastic beers. Uh, tell us about that uh, New England style beer that we tried earlier. That one kind of kind of knocked my socks off a little bit. Oh, uh, you mean uh, Life in the Clouds? That's the right? one. Yeah, so, so Life in the Clouds is our new-ish, uh, as in earlier this year, full-time New England style IPA. So uh, we do a whole bunch of uh, uh, one-off what we call project beers that are I mean, where we get weird and creative. This one was designed to be a beer that was replicable, something that we could brew with consistency every time we made it, and then also something that the price point was right. So instead of charging, you know, $20, $22, whatever 
crazy prices some beers got up to now, which those beers are phenomenal, but unrealistic to ask people to buy those every week, right? This is spoke. This is we sell it. I think he's selling it for something like nine ninety nine for a four pack, which is an That's amazing price point for New England reasonable. style. Yeah. yeah, um, they can get pretty pricey. So it is a it's a six percent New England style, really sessionable. Doesn't have much sweetness on the back end. Got a nice citrus nose to it. A nice haze. But the point being, you can drink a four pack of it and not be going to bed or you know anything after it. So uh, it's a nice kind of everyday New England style. Well, I really love the uh, the story of your brewery. Uh, we we've talked to so many breweries where uh, they've kind of brought in maybe a graphic designer in house, like Half Acre has done, or they've kind of outsourced that work. The fact that you guys are doing it the way that you're doing it is a very novel concept and a really cool way to do it. I don't know. I, I appreciate the fact that you guys are promoting the uh, the art community, you know, across the world. That's a really fantastic way to kind of spread the word about your beer. Yeah, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thanks for sitting down with us. It's been really interesting to get your perspective, Canadian perspective, a little bit <laughs> uh, to the, the craft beer industry. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, appreciate thank it. you. We are back at the Antioch Summer Beer Riot. It's actually the Summer 10th event, 7th Annual. We're actually here with a friend of the show. Introduce yourself. Say hi, hi to everybody. It's Charlotte from Only Child. How long have you been involved with Antioch? Is this your first festival? Tell us a little bit of your involvement here. Yeah, so Antioch Beer Riot, I live really close by, and this is the first beer fest I had ever been to, long before the breweries. started coming to this when I was 21 or 22, and they had this awesome little mixture of local and breweries that we couldn't get very often in the area. Rick's been doing this for a while, I think. So, And this was also the first beer fest I poured at for Only Child, too. So oh, nice. it's kind of got this soft spot for me. Ben came with me, and we were shotgunning beers because it was like 110 degrees outside. And so we've always had a good time here. We like it. Awesome, awesome. So what did you bring today? Today we've got our light lager, Stigma Crusher. We also have our Hellas lager, HE Double Hockey Sticks. And then we also have our IPA, which Rick is selling, Evil Tendencies. That one is all Citra and Mosaic hops, and we brew that one once a year. And then a little special surprise yeah, for you Yeah, I was going to say, can you tell us about this little special <laughs> yeah. surprise you brought for us? So this is our Shabsky. This is uh, Harrison, our brewer. This is his beer. It's a white peanut butter stout. I don't want to ask, what, what is the ABV on this? 12%. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen because it was so sweet, so smooth. So I'm good, like, this yeah. is dangerous. The guys like their stouts big. Darn sure. it. But yeah. it doesn't taste like that. There's no boozy taste to this. They're dessert it's just, beers. Wow. Yeah. This is like, what, the, some, like a port wine or something. Sometimes a, a peanut butter beer can be a little cloying, a little too much. This is this is fucking perfect. Uh, Glad you like the, it. Uh, the effervescence really kind of cuts the uh, the peanut butter flavor a little bit. The fact that you guys went with a white stout might, uh, might have contributed to that as well. Really well done. This is good. a really good beer. Yeah, you know, it's a stout for the summer, for sure. I don't think it's too heavy. The mouth feels still really nice and light on it. But yeah, sneaky, it's sneaky smooth at 12%. <laughs> For sure. It'll catch up to you. I, 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 I knew when I asked that, I knew the answer I was going to get. <laughs> I wasn't at the brewery for the first uh, interview that we did with you guys, so it's really nice meeting you, Charlotte. Absolutely. I, I really uh, I got to edit the episode, so I, I really enjoyed talking about that one. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the fan art? I, I was the one who submitted the question about Don't Tell Mom the Baby Citra is Dead. I really love the, the, the can art on that, the Nintendo controllers and all of that kind of stuff. Stuff. Tell us about kind of the reaction that folks have had to your brewery and to uh, the, the art that goes on the cans. Chris Tankowitz is our designer, and he actually met Ben at a small tasting, I believe, at a local bottle shop. And Ben was kind of looking for a new graphic designer, and Chris approached him, I think, and was like, hey, man, this is what I do. And it's great. I think he does a really good job of giving a visual aspect to our brand. So it's saying, like, this is who we are. It's tongue-in-cheek. It's fun. It's playful. The black and white, I think, is awesome. You know, there's so many cans that are so overwhelming, and they're gorgeous. But these are, like, you know it's an only child can. If it's that black and white can with some of that cartoonish design to it. But, yeah, we get a lot of comments on the canning and the, the labels, the designs. He does a very good job of bringing the point across with the beer. So Evil Tendencies, for example, is little skeleton-dressed kid who's blowing up a frog with a stick of dynamite. <laughs> We do not condone animal violence in any way, but uh, you know it's that throwback of almost that Calvin and Hobbes style and 
it's always um, reminiscent of being younger and kind of that youthful vibe to it. It's a really fun can. It's almost like uh, panels in a comic. You yep, know? exactly. It's, That's uh, exactly it's more, what it's going One for. picture leads to another until the, the frog is no longer. So yeah, it's all Citro Mosaic Hop. Brew this one once a year, and the guys like to change it up every time we brew it. They'll do a different hop combo with it, and it's sitting at 7.2%. Oh, so it's light, light compared to the light compared to the stout, yeah. And then I'm sipping on our favorite uh, Stigma Crusher. It's our light lager. The can is Ben himself, one of the guys in the tap room named Brett, and their favorite game is beer darts, which we've kind of hooked a lot of our customers on. And then the rules for beer darts are on the side of the cans. This is our beer. This is our our lager. It's our crusher for sure. Big favorite from the podcast. <laughs> we got some good feedback on the the steak with crusher. How many people were really impressed after they heard the podcast and went out and drank it? They were really impressed with uh, how good that one came across. Awesome. So follow up to the podcast yeah. interview. Can you tell us what sort of trends do you see in the in the beer industry? forming now and what sort of trends do you think you can kind of predict for the future? Right now, I mean, obviously, hazy IPAs have just completely taken over. I would say it's not even a trend anymore. That's a norm. I think collaborations are one of the bigger trends you're seeing right now. And it's not always just with other breweries. It's collaborations you're seeing with bands or with uh, local liquor stores, with people just involved in the community. And I think that's super cool to see. It's exciting. You're, you're giving people a say and you're introducing your kind of almost fan base to someone new or someone different in the beer industry, which I think is what collaborating is all about. So you're, I think you're going to keep seeing that from a lot of breweries, everyone just making beers together collectively. That's definitely one of the bigger trends. And you're seeing you're seeing loggers and pilsners coming back real strong right now, which I think is awesome. You've got breweries who are known for making solid IPAs, and now they're pushing out some of these really well-made pilsners and loggers, which is exciting because it's kind of a true testament to a brewery making a good beer is if you can take something and not dump a bunch of hops on it and make it flavorful and make it a good beer. And, you know, it's a beer you can drink all day without getting tired of it. Everyone likes a beer like that. It's a beer you can share with your dad. So I like that a lot. I think that's a trend we're starting to see a lot more too. We talked about that during the podcast about that's the first question that people have when they go into these breweries. Do you have anything similar to a Miller Lite? Yeah, we do. And it's really good. Yeah. Try this. <laughs> yeah, I think craft beer for a long time has been associated with stuff that's scorching your palate. And mm-hmm. that's not the case anymore. You know, it's not just pilsners and lagers. You've got the sour ales or the fruited ales kind of really taking a big strong hold right now. And those are approachable to people who typically would be drinking wine or something else in that beer. So we're showing them what beer can do. So you mentioned collaborations. Can we expect any collaborations with Only Child in the, in the near future? Yeah, I mean, we've done a few for sure. We've got some kind of in the works right now. We've got a few things we're focusing on. It looks like we're trying to get this second location kind of in the books right now. So we'll see what's going to happen as far as collaborations go. But hopefully we can definitely get some of our friends in here to make some beers with us. And we'll be sending some people out the door to go make some beers too. Really appreciate you sitting down with us Absolutely. and talking beer. And we hope to be back down uh, maybe next year. We'll get a little, uh, little update on how a little follow up, yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. August 18th is our anniversary party. We're re releasing all of our sours and stouts. So if you guys want to come hang out that day too, it's always a good day. All right. Hey, it's, it's still good. recording. It's still sure. recording. That was an invite. <laughs> it's an absolute, it's an open invite. So, oh, yeah, you guys okay. are more than welcome to join us that day. We've got barbecue and pierogies and beers and music all day. So it's a awesome. party. Awesome. Right, so, uh, before we finish up, Jesus, what do you think of the, that IPA that we just tried? That. Uh, Evil tendencies. It seems so light. <laughs> it seems so <laughs> light compared to that, that big style we had yeah. before. But it's it's fantastic. Crisp. That's what I think about. It's like very crisp, hoppy, but not in your face hops. Right. It's a good summer beer. It's perfect for now. Honestly. Summer IPA, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. Awesome. Right. Well, Charlotte, thank you for joining us. And we will definitely be talking to you again soon. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Thank right. you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Alex here from the Tap Tiger Podcast, along with Jesus, and we're here at Summer Tent Event here at Antioch Fine Wines and Liquors, and we're uh, sitting down with uh, two really interesting folks starting a brand new brewery, Ninth Hour Brewery. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves and kind of tell us about the brewery. I'm Dave Austin. And I'm Jim Valsa. We're uh, both teachers in the local area at Lakes High School. We've been brewing together together now for about six, seven years. Ninth Hour is code word for going out for beers on Friday after school. We walk around school saying, uh, you going to Ninth Hour, you going to Ninth Hour. So it's basically our code word for going uh, across the street to a local establishment to have some beers. Kids ask what it is. They're like, oh, we have a meeting Ninth Hour. And it's kind of like, oh. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, Jim and I have been brewing together for a while. We've entered our beers in uh, some, some competitions. We've won some awards. And we're like, hey, we should 
maybe give this a try. So we're looking in the Lake Villa, Lindenhurst area to open a brewery. And I think that's what really drew us to you guys is this fun story about teachers turn brewer. It's not a typical story. You said that you're a science teacher, so I assume that that plays in a little bit as, as far as the chemistry of brewing. Are you guys fans uh, of uh, Breaking Bad? Yeah. Yes. As a matter, <laughs> I, 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 I as, a matter as a matter of fact, we had a uh, we had an article, believe it or not, in the uh, school newspaper, and it was called Breaking Beer. <laughs> So, nice. I know, I know, I know. Don't yeah. worry, we passed everything through the administration. They said it was okay. And the yeah. kids, uh, t- they did a really good job. They took a more of a business spin on it and, instead of just not an alcohol thing. Yeah. So Nice. It was, it was more nice. of a hobby spin on right, it. Right, right, right. Not many of them know that we're going to try to open a brewery. Correct, so correct. Some yep, of them correct. know that we're doing it as a hobby, but that's kind of where we leave it with them. Where's the brewery going to be located? What what can we expect once you guys are uh, up and running? What sort of beers did you bring with uh, to, to try today? Yeah, so we're looking uh, to open our brewery in Windenhurst Lake Villa area, but right now we have a, a place that we really like in Lake Villa that we think will be a great location to draw more people to that area, uh, especially it's kind of near downtown, which the downtown is kind of up and coming. Timothy O'Toole's just came there and so we think that'd be a really good draw to have them and a local brewery in the area. Today we brought four different beers, five actually, one for the rare release. Our rare release is a New England IPA, call it Ivy League IPA. We also brought Emily's Ale, which is a strawberry blonde. Brought Hall Pass Hefeweizen, which is a Hefeweizen beer, a wheat beer. We also brought a Spruce Tip Pale Ale, we call Tree Farm Field Trip, which is the spruce tips were picked about eight miles down the road at a local farm that my partner uh, lives on. Uh, the Richardson Tree Farm. I was lucky enough to uh, marry into the family, and so they've been real kind with uh, using ingredients from the farm to help us brew the beer, and we hope to enter a partnership with them as well so we can sell the beer at the corn maze and the Christmas trees. And so the Spruce Tip Pale Ale was a beer that we wanted to uh, showcase with some locally grown ingredients that were from the farm. So I picked the Spruce Tips at the last part of uh, spring there, late spring, and then Dave and I brewed up a uh, Spruce Tip Pale Ale. Yeah, and it turned out quite nice, and um, our last beer that we have on tap is uh, Berliner Weiss, which is a sour beer. It's a little bit more on the sour end of that style, which we both like and a lot of people seem to like. And we brought some uh, raspberry syrup to sweeten it up if you prefer that. I, I did not add anything to it, Yeah, and I loved it. I thought it was very crisp, had that little bit of like tartness, you know, that Absolutely. The, the Berliner Weiss does. Sure. Alex, you added a I, whole bunch. I, I definitely I, I got to tell you, <laughs> you added a whole bunch of raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I went with a few spurts of that raspberry. And that's my preference. I'm not huge on the the sour sour, the Imperial Warhead kind of sour, which is definitely not where you guys are going with Berliner Weiss. <laughs> but I do enjoy a little bit of a, a fruited sour, a little sure. more than mm-hmm. usual, a little more than some folks. So uh, I definitely went heavy on the raspberry, and I was very impressed. Thought yeah. it played really well between the raspberry uh, syrup and the and the Berliner. Uh, Jesus, he just loved the, the straight Berliner. Yeah, and it's yeah. totally a personal preference. Some people like it just the super sour, pucker up a little bit, feel in the back of the yeah. the palate there. And some people like to add that sweetness with a little bit of fruitiness. It's so yeah. it's. I had the first couple of sips, and I'm like, I'm good. I don't need yeah. to add anything. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Let's, let's talk more about this. We're calling it a special release. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit more about this beer? Yeah, so it's a, a New England IPA style. Uh, we brewed it actually once last year, and then we brewed it again this year. It's got a very citrusy nose to it. You should probably taste some uh, grapefruit and almost passion fruit flavors in there. It does finish a little bit bitter, so it has some juiciness, but it does finish a little bit bitter. That's what I'm finding with these New England style. They're very citrusy. I love them. I do love them. It's very citrusy, but they lose a little bit of that IPA sense with that hoppiness and that bitterness. This one has that. I it's love that. It's got a little yeah, bite on the back end. Yeah, yeah right. no, this is good. This is a good balance because I feel like once you go to New England, you're almost saying we're going full citrus, sweet, juicy, mm-hmm. and you lose that bitterness. But this one has it. Very good. Well, it, it is an IPA, so yeah. you do you do want that bitterness there. And I think that, yeah, you could go too forward on the citrusy and the juicy part of it and lose some of that bitterness. And we definitely wanted to keep that bitterness there while also showcasing some of the fruitiness and the juiciness from the hops. We don't add anything but the regular stuff, malt and hops to this beer, and yeast, of course, and water. That's it. That's all that, that, that's so all think, that makes the beer. I think we added about five or six different variety of hops right. at different stages throughout the boil and then we added a lot right at cutoff in the whirlpool and we actually lowered the temperature of the wort to about 140 and we added a bunch more basically that was in the whirlpool to help keep the hop characteristics and the, the subtleness you get from the different hops with the different uh, citrusy and fruit flavors um, then we also dry hopped it a couple weeks later Jeez. with a whole <laughs> bunch more hops yeah, yeah, yeah. so we, we, use any, we use a whole bunch of we use pellet hops we use lupulin powder 
And then we also use El Dorado um, oil, uh, hop oil extract in this okay. brew. Actually, that was going to be my next question. What, uh, what sort of hops are we dealing with in this beer? Yeah, so we use uh, Cascade and Citra in the boil. At cutoff, when, after we dropped it down to 140, we added Mosaic, uh, the lupulin powder, as well as the El Dorado hop oil extract. And then, did I say Citra? That was somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah, in the boil, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, when sure, I mean, we... It had to be, it had to be in lot. there. There's a yeah. lot, all right? And That's... right off at cutoff, too, there was a little bit of Waimea. Mm-hmm. And then in the dry hop, there was Waimea, pellets, more mosaic lupulin powder. And I believe that was it in That's the, it. Yeah, in the dry hop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you just said is amazing because as we were talking before we started hit record, you're essentially home brewers still, right? Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about the where you're brewing right now? Sure. So I, we are brewing in my garage, actually. <laughs> and like I said before, I was lucky enough to marry into the Richardson family that owns the corn maze and the Christmas trees. We're blessed with having just a lot of open space and the availability to do, to do that. And my wife has also allowed us to do that as well. So we brew the beer in my garage, and then we run lines down into our basement where we have all of our fermenters, which are temperature controlled. Unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah, we brew on a one barrel system right now. We have three temperature controlled fermenters where we can warm it up or cool it down. And then we also have some other fermenters that aren't temperature controlled, which we first started on, but we also use those now for our sour beers. Correct, yeah. Right. Uh, let me ask you guys, as a brewery that's just starting out, don't even have a location yet, or working on that, the brewing industry is a lot different now than it was 10 years ago, than it was five years ago, than it was even one year ago. How is it for you guys jumping into that pool? It's got to be a little bit different jumping in now as opposed to, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, it's it's actually a lot of fun. Um, there's so many choices out there now. Jim was, when we first started, we brewed a lot of traditional beers, like traditional German beers and Belgian beers. We kind of expanded outside the box just because that's well we just wanted to experiment but also that's what people want they want new beers they want to try new flavors and so we've tried to stick with the curve and maybe be ahead of the curve in some areas with some of our beers and we're just trying to experiment right now and you know we can't sell it right now so we it's all experiments which is i don't know for me it's fun as a science teacher and we just find something we like we tweak it a little bit well on there. honestly if you were doing the new england style a year and a half ago you're good because we've talked to big brewers who just recently just hey this is kind of a big deal you guys are doing the right thing right now yeah well, so good thanks we, and yeah, um, also we've we've been we felt very welcomed also into the into the fold not all businesses are like this where uh, people are actually welcoming you and helping you out we've had really good response from lots of folks um, lots of different breweries around the area have been very, very helpful to us, and we found that to be one of the one of the best parts, at least from my perspective, of this this whole adventure, is just the the family feeling that you get with the group of brewers that are in this area. That's the one thing we've found out is the brewing environment is a lot less competitive, more collaborative. Yes. Correct. Yes, yeah, very much more collaborative. Everyone's friendly. Basically, even if we share a recipe with someone else, no one can actually replicate exactly what we did. So mm-hmm. we're, you know, it's it's fun. Everyone helps each other out. Like, oh man, what are you brewing next? And you know, like, we're the same way, and we want to share our beers, and people want to share their beers, and it's it's just a fun community. Yeah. Yep. It's a very neighborly thing. If you yeah. need a cup of sugar or a cup of hops, yeah. you know, <laughs> right? people are willing yeah. to help you out. Yeah. For sure. Well, uh, we really appreciate you guys sitting down with us and talking with us at this amazing event. Can you tell us what Antioch Liquor is going to mean for you guys in the future as far as your distribution? So we want to keep things very local. We want to own our area here and really support our local folks. And Antioch Fine Wine is a huge part of that. I've really enjoyed coming here as a customer and now hopefully as a potential client. That's going to be just awesome. They've been really good to other local breweries as well. And so we're super pumped about getting our stuff here and being able to have them distribute that to the folks who live in the area. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope to be down once you guys have a physical location. We'll come check you guys out. Sit down for a full interview. How's awesome. that sound? That's, that'd be wonderful. Let's we'll see, see you guys there. ninth hour, okay? Okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. B-double-E-double-R-U-N, beer run. We are back, Tap Takeover Podcast at Antioch Fine Wines and Liquor. Seventh annual Summer Tent event with friend of the show by proxy, actually. So uh, uh, introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. Yeah, I am Matt Seifert. I work for Lakefront Brewery. We're based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's where we're based Woo-hoo! out of? Yeah. yeah. Damn yeah. right, damn right. Hometown. How often have you uh, been in Antioch involved with this festival? 
So I've been working for Lakefront for uh, four years, just started in late 2014. So actually this is the second time that I've been to Antioch for their summer event. I think I had skipped last year. I was busy last year during the event, but a couple years ago I came and it was pretty rainy. So today I'm pretty, it's pretty blessed to have this nice weather. It's awesome out here. It's great. Oh, it's perfect out here. What did you bring today? So I brought you guys our Brandy Barrel Age Cherry Lager, which is part of our Barrel Age series. And uh, we have four year, and this is our springtime version. So it comes out in May. And what this consists of, I don't know if you guys, are you guys are you f- are you familiar with Lakefront Beers? Oh, uh, 100%. Yeah, right. they, Lakefront was our first interview. Yeah, I think we were speaking about that. You guys yeah. were a big fan of Russ, the first, first episode. Russ, Russ yeah. the man. Yeah. He's the best. <laughs> yeah. But I brought our, our uh, Barrel Age Cherry Lager, which is released in May, and it's part of our Barrel Age series. So this is a 7.3% cherry lager, and it's made with Montmorency cherries from Door County. So everyone, you're familiar with everyone going up to Door County, getting oh, all yeah. the cherries up there. Definitely. So we pick our allotment of cherries, and we make a uh, cherry lager, which in the years past, it was uh, it was just a regular 6% cherry lager. It, w- it wasn't brandy barrel aged. And then we decided to change it up a few years ago and kind of spice things up with all the barrel aged products that were coming out. So, And we put ours into brandy barrels. And why we do brandy is, you guys are from Milwaukee, so you know, brandy is, uh, Wisconsin's the largest consumer of brandy in the country. You, when you go up in Wisconsin, I'm from Illinois. I, I was born in St. Sorry Charles. to hear that. Yes, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> but when you order a uh, old fashioned here in Illinois, the land of Lincoln, you get a, a, a whiskey old fashioned or a bourbon old fashioned. When you go up north in Wisconsin, it's a brandy old fashioned. That's by default. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We naturally, that's our home thing. We fit with with brandy barrels. Being from Milwaukee, so. We do the Montmorency cherries, make a, a nice cherry lager out of it, and then we age it in brandy barrels for about six months. So this year, actually, the alcohol came down to about 7.3%. In previous years, it's been about 10, 10.7, 10.3, something around there. I actually am unsure of why the alcohol dropped about 3% from this year. I don't know if it was like the sugar content in the, in the cherries or if it was a bad cherry harvest, if that had anything to do with it. but. I know uh, previous years we're usually sitting about 10%, and this year's about 7.3. Well, not to get too far into the weeds, but I know Lakefront, I mean, we follow them very closely. Their alcohol has been shifting back and forth, more specifically like their barrel-aged pumpkin beers has gone like up and down, up and down, like yep. the ABV. Yeah, I don't know why either. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it makes it a little more approachable. I, if I'm sitting at a bar on a Friday night, a 7% beer sounds doable. A 10% yeah. beer sounds like end of my night, so... You know, sometimes uh, a little variation in the alcohol content can uh, can be a little more approachable for some of the customers. I agree, and I was telling someone earlier, seven point three percent is a is a lot. I, I feel as though this year the uh, approachableness of, of the beer is more prominent than, than in previous years, and the reason why is because ten point three percent. I think you get a little more of the alcohol heat. So you're drinking it, you kind of got the more brandy up front with the alcohol heat into it. So I think this is kind of toned down on the alcohol, makes the cherry pop a little bit. So I actually I actually like the 7% one. Yeah, you get too much of the uh, that booziness of yeah. the barrel, like if, if, if it was too high. Yeah. No, this is a good balance. Very good. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And also, I've had the uh, the straight cherry ale from Lakefront before. It's not my favorite beer. It's it's very heavy on the cherry. I think the uh, the barrel does it add, it out. does add yeah. a little something. Yeah, it mellows it out. It gives it that that little bit of bourbon, cherry, brandy kind of flavor. I, I think there's really something nice going on there. Absolutely, yeah, I agree. I, I think it's weird sometimes when people come up and they're like, "Oh man, I, I don't do cherry," and then it's always the first comment is, "Is this like the Sam Adams cherry wheat?" Oh god. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've had to rebuttal that one all yeah, uh, you know hundreds of times, but uh, it is not it is not like Sam Adams cherry wheat. Cherry wheat's a great beer, but it is uh, completely different from that. And I agree that the, the the barrel of the brandy really helps to tone it down. So tell us what else is going on at Lakefront. It's always evolving at Lakefront. We're always uh, we're always looking to do new things, and we we really, you know, our core our core base is most important to us. River West Stein is a huge beer, and, and that beer will never go away. And a lot of the core styles will never go away. But the beer industry is always constantly evolving, uh, especially here down in Illinois. There's a ton of beers down here, so the market's sh- it's it's growing, but it's shrinking, right? And uh, we gotta always be innovative and come out with new things. So this year we actually, and I don't know if you guys had it. 
but uh, we came out with a low calorie green tea ale. It's called yes. Easy Teasy. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. so that's pretty new. Something very, very unique to us. You know, we had new grist, which is our gluten free, but uh, coming out with Easy Teasy this year, it's uh, one of the lowest calorie craft beers in the country. It's a nice tea flavor if you like that. So we're, we're always trying to kind of push the boundaries like we have done with New Grist in the past and come out with new innovative stuff. But I think kind of the trend in the country right now, in far as, as, as far as my view, easy drinking beer. So the IPAs, yeah, they're always going to be there, but it's more of a just a base lager, right? You've seen uh, Founders Solid Gold be huge. Just the easy drinking lagers. 805, actually Firestone Walker just... They have a lager, uh, just called call Firestone Walker Lager. So those are becoming very, very popular. Next year, we're working on a, a package that will try to, to hit on that area. I can't re- really talk about what's coming out, but it should be uh, Well, this a, a defeats nice the purpose of gotcha journalism yeah, if you don't speak so. on this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not authorized from the, the powers above to talk about it. I just it, got but a text from Russ. He said, yeah, Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't, you're making me nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading my next question on my list. It asks, yeah. what are you coming out with next? Yeah, actually, so there's a lot of products, right? We had, we actually have five rotating seasonals. Okay, we're actually trying to hone that down a little bit. We're gonna uh, stop a couple seasonals and focus on year-round core products, but releasing a couple new products next year. So. Our double IPA series. I don't know if you guys remember, we had Hop Jockey for a long time. Oh, yeah. That was yep. a that was a standard, one of my favorite beers. I loved it. All right, we had that for a long time. Decided to discontinue that series and then replace it with a rotating double IPA series, which was draft only. So you couldn't get it in package, but it helped kind of the specialty aspect, the rare, limited release kind of thing that people will always look for. I think that series may be coming to a close, and then we'll focus on a new year-round core brand that we can grow sales with. I gotta say, I've been really impressed with the IPAs that you guys have been putting out this year. You've kind of gone a little experimental with some of them. The uh, the oh. Soaker series with the double IPA, nope. I thought it was a hit. I had that one for the first time at Summerfest. Pretty darn impressed with that one. What, what else can you can you tell us about what's coming down the line with those double IPAs? It's funny that you mentioned Soaker because I had a pint yesterday. I thought you were gonna say because I can't speak to that. No, no, no. <laughs> uh-uh. No, I actually had a pint of Soaker yesterday at Consume. I don't even know what that, what is that, Arlington Heights or something, somewhere over there? Lake Zurich. And I had a pint of that, and I actually had Soaker when it was out of the Bright Tank. So oh, wow. uh, we, we put a pigtail in there, and I got to try I was one of the first ones to try it at the brewery, and it was great. And we, uh, a couple of us guys just uh, sat there talking about it. It's really grapefruity. The hops that they're putting in there, it's really... Uh, Really, a, it's not like an added grapefruit sense, but it's a, it's just the small grapefruit notes that, that come off. It's pretty prominent. And I actually went home last night and opened another bottle of Soaker just because I thought it was so good during the day and, uh, and absolutely loved it. But the double IPA series will be um, uh, continuing for a little bit. It's okay. going to come to a close by the end of the year. Okay. So um, a few different variations before that closes out? Yes. Hopefully. Yeah. So that series is going to come to a close. But what we have coming up as far as seasonals, we have our pumpkin lager. We have our Oktoberfest. And then as we were talking earlier about the, the Brandy Barrel Age cherry lager, we have the fall version of our Brandy Barrel Age series or our Barrel Age series. And that's our Imperial Pumpkin, which is... Um, yeah, which is uh, a pumpkin ale. This is a huge fan. Yeah, 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 it is fantastic. It is one of the best ones. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. It really is. We'd yeah. like to do an episode every year called Jesus' Pumpkin Patch. We'll have to make sure that that one is involved in the pumpkin yes, patches. Yes, definitely. Actually, still sitting on like four or five years of the Imperial yeah. ones. Yeah. So, and that's what every time we do that, we look at the ABV. Yep. And it, it is bouncing back and forth. Yes. Yeah. That one has that one has bounced back and forth. Yeah. It's always I always have to ask every year, you know, what's the alcohol at? Because it's never. It's I never mean, one same. year was like almost fourteen. One year was was <laughs> yeah. it was pretty high. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty high up there. I'm I'm okay with it. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're talking about a fourteen percent beer, we actually had our our winter seasonal. It won't be around this year, unfortunately. Oh, are you? You're not doing the winter spice? No. Uh, no. Oh, we were just talking. Yeah, breaking news. We were just yes. talking about this on the drive of coming up episodes of doing a, maybe a winter spice tasting. We are huge fans of the lake from winter spice, the barrel age yeah, one. Especially after sitting yeah. down with Russ and doing like a 30 year vertical of yeah. those things. Wow. I know. I have, wow. uh, I have is, winter uh, spice. Go. I have winter spice in my, in my cellar too, yeah. a couple years. So it's, it's going to be. We're going to need to have that. 
We're going to take I'll, that I'll, from I'll, you. I'll, I'll help you out on that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's sad to see that go. That was one of my favorite beers. It was really unique, really spicy, <laughs> yeah. you know. I, I always oftentimes call that beer a fireplace beer. It's like you got to sit down, exactly, maybe have one, yeah. don't get up because you might be wobbly after a few of those at 14%. But that beer will be going away. But uh, I'll tell you what, it's understandable. When you have a brewery that's got so many beers, so uh, such a huge repertoire, some things are going to go away, maybe for a little while, maybe for a little longer, maybe they come back. You know, it, you just got to kind of ride the waves of public interest on some right. of those beers. That, totally understandable. I think it's, we heard it yeah. from the horse's mouth when we met with Russ. He's like, it will come back. You know, eventually things come yeah. back. You know, it's not it's not like all time retired, right? The way Russ put it is uh, things get put into the bullpen and eventually they come on back. That's right. Yeah, there's, there's beers that we have that... You know, kind of, you know, we say discontinued, but that's almost a bad word, right? Yeah. I would yeah. say retired for a bit until into, they come out of retirement. The yeah, the bullpen's bullpen. a nice way. Yeah. yeah. So as we're closing up, the other thing that kind of distinguishes you and the thing I absolutely love about Lakefront is the My Turn series. Mm-hmm. So you just came out with the Arturo. Yep. So what is coming up down the line? You guys must be running out of employees. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I constantly am wondering when my year is, right? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, right. the company just keeps growing. It's like, uh, what, what do I get? Keep put, what, getting pushed what, back, or what? What would be your beer? You know what? Well, well, it's, well, it's a two-parter now. Yeah. Well, all right, yeah. what's, two-parter. What's, coming, okay. what's coming up next, and what would your beer be? Arturo is out now, which is a, uh, a Mexican-style beer. We actually got great response from that, and they actually brewed another 50 barrels for that. Nice, damn good beer. It's a tasty damn beer. Yeah, beer. very, very easy drinking. Yeah. Yep. Yep, and then we had Windy coming out. So, we, what wind, kind of style is that? That is, man, you're gonna you're gonna test my skills here. I think that <laughs> is a it's a long, long name. Well, don't worry about it. So yeah, what no, else? just the, tell us. What so, <laughs> Kristen was a smoked maple Weizenbach, and then Arturo was a, a Mexican lager. Yep. And and um, uh, Windy is it's just it's 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 laughs in my memory, but it's a I think it's a like smoked. No, it's not smoked. I, you know what? I don't know. I, I got I to pass on this one. Okay. By, by the time you listen to this, it'll be out. You can yeah, check it out. I, I wish I brought my phone with because I would look at the thing. It's like an oak-aged oak aged vanilla Doppelbach. Oh, boy. It's like okay. I remember when they sent out the cell sheet. Yeah. It was like the logo, the label was like you had to – it was like three sentences long. It was so Jeez. long. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I think – I could be wrong on that, but I th- I'm pretty sure it's an oak-aged uh, 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 vanilla Doppelbach. Okay. So yeah. what were your be? Now you know, I'm putting you in a spot. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I you could do like Josh and just say just do a Black Friday. Josh, Josh <laughs> killed it. Josh killed it. And then uh, no, he literally. I think that's that's the word we got from uh, Russ and Jim. He's like, he just said do a Black Friday, so that's what we did. Yeah, yeah, he did previous year's Black Friday, <laughs> like before it changed. Yeah. The, yeah. the recipe changed yeah. over. Yeah, so that was a good one. Johnson also had a great double IPA, but oh, yeah. I I would probably you know what my personal favorite hop is Mosaic. I love Mosaic, and I know it's kind of overplayed right now, but. Uh, it's a, it's, I, it I just love the flavors that come off that. So I would probably just tend to stick to maybe a mosaic pale or some something of that sort. I also, yeah. Possibly the first uh, hazy IPA that uh, Lake Friends ever done? Well, uh, oh. might not be the first. Be the first. <laughs> Breaking news so. again. <laughs> Yeah, where's a little uh, research and development going in on a, a little hazy? Okay. That's not set in stone yet, so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens. Breaking news here yeah. on the Tap Takeover podcast. Okay. That's that's a good place. That's to That's a end good it. place to yeah. stop. Yeah, because uh, uh, we don't we don't want to draw too much attention. <laughs> and don't uh, draw too much yeah. information out of you. Get you. Get you fired from Lakefront or anything. So, uh. <laughs> you're obviously an uh, informant for us now. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. You put so me on speed dial. You're an embedded journalist now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we really no. appreciate you stopping by and uh, talking beer with us. Yeah, right? of course. It's been great. Yeah, it's been a wonderful day. So thank oh, you yeah. for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing the, uh, the cherry lager, barrel-aged. So awesome. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Cheers. We are back, Tap the Group Podcast, Jesus along with uh, Alex, at the 7th Annual Summer Tent Event here at Antioch. We're here with three scary guys, <laughs> and, one of them, and one of them has my name, so let's go around the horn, introduce yourselves, guys. 
My name is Zachary Bell. I'm a veteran ambassador with the Boo Campaign and a Marine Corps veteran. Jay Blancos, Marine Corps veteran and amateur MMA fighter. Jesus Gallegos, name twin. <laughs> I work for uh, an organization called the Oscar Mike and the Oscar Mike Foundation. Can you uh, give us the lowdown on why you guys are here at Antioch? Okay. I'm a veteran ambassador with the Boo Campaign. Part of what I do is I travel all over the country and try to raise awareness about our organization and what we're doing. And one of the things we do is we have a partnership with Shiner Brewery and they have a Toast Our Troops initiative to where specially marked um, cases and beers uh, go back to supporting our organization and uh, our mission with our health and wellness program. This is the second time I've actually come to this event in particular. First time, it was rough. I mean, it was raining so bad. I, I saw Noah out there and animals were lined <laughs> up two by two. But it was really cool because I was, I'd never been more impressed to see people who just really wanted to be a part of something and give to something because they stayed underneath all the tents that were saggy with the water just to bet on the auction item to help the organization and that's the type of stuff that that i take from this i told some of my friends in the area about jay and jesus well i just wanted other people to know about you know the organization i'm with and also to let them know about some of the things the veteran military community is doing because you know i think one of the best things i learned from the military is my desire to serve my community and how me personally i found the best of myself and still do in the service of others because it's you, know, you find how much more we're alike than different because you know, like there's no reason on paper that like I should know Jesus or Jay, but I mean I would I would die for him in a heartbeat just just because of the commonality and that love for each other. It's really special and you know I want to bring them in this part of my life and my mission beyond the battlefield too. So so let's talk about the whole festival. Any favorites so far? What have uh, you guys tried so far? Only Child is probably my favorite brewery out this way. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, um, friend of the show actually. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, followed them a lot. Um, social media. I've been up there, so their IPAs to me are second to none. So that's that's my favorite. No, we got them right here on the table. Yeah, it's fantastic. You guys? Well, I just uh, kind of got here, so the Scheinerbach Original is what I'm drinking right now, and it's pretty good. First time I've had it. So. Oh, nice, nice. Scheinerbach. Yeah, Zach, Zach's gonna I mean, say Scheinerbach <laughs> because he has to. No. Contractually obligated. I mean, all those beers that you gentlemen named sound amazing, but can you buy them? and support our troops at the same time, I say no. When you buy a special edition <laughs> Shiner beer with the Toast Our Troops label, you're going back to support the boot campaign. You can find out more about them at bootcampaign.org. That's a plug. And I'll tell you what, the thing about Shiner Bach, you know, it gets a bad name as, you know, a big distribution, yeah. you know, and, and having a big a big name. But Shiner was one of the first alternatives to the Miller Light and the Bud Lights. And, you know, yeah. it was one of the very first craft breweries, if you will, which has now become a, a large-scale brewery, much in the way that Sam Adams has. But yeah. uh, I'll tell you what, uh, the fact that they're coming out with some special releases, yeah. got to give it up to uh, Shinerbach. Well, and it's, you know, this is obviously like outside of their original market and stuff. And, you know, more importantly for me, just from my position, I love to see all these different places all over the country and see how many people, not that they didn't care, but to learn how much people do care and know about the military. It helps me to um, be humble and remember that I'm definitely way too high on my own supply of, like, knowing way too much of things and stuff and I have to take a step back and realize that not everyone you know understands the things that you know that I know to people in the military or even not in the military people just do well read and understand you know different foreign policy concepts and stuff so because I mean the war's just gone on for so long it's hard to not feel like it's forgotten it's um, everywhere but to see people are still just I didn't know about that tell me more I want to be involved I mean that's the stuff I mean, that's prices. So. What other events are you guys doing throughout the rest of this summer and into next year? So I know with the boot campaign, we have different events scheduled throughout the rest of the year. And you know, I'm the one that was closest just, just to this one I've come before. So I just kind of wait. There's a program manager who assigns you know, different events to us, you know, depending on geography and availability. I know my good friend Jay's fighting soon. Yeah, I fight next weekend, August 4th, at the Outdoor War in Island Lake. It's going to be at Side Outs Bar and Grill on Roberts Road. And I'm looking, I need two more wins before I can turn pro, and I'm looking to knock this guy out. So. Oh, shit, okay. <laughs> Are we talking uh, boxing you or MMA? What's from a... her, though? Uh, it's going to be an MMA fight. I wish you the best. We definitely support everything you guys are doing. Can you tell our listeners where to go online to kind of follow more events like this where you yeah. can support the troops? Yeah, definitely. If you'd like to find out anything more about you know, Boot Campaign, the work we're doing, go to bootcampaign.org. We're always taking donations, different things like that. I feel it's my role and responsibility to spread the word um, because we have more people referred to us by non-veterans. Like they refer patients to us than veterans themselves. 
So tell anyone, tell everybody that we sell, you know, combat boots as part of a fundraising tool and have many different ways to be a part of the community. And we're all just trying to do whatever we can to move beyond the battlefield and take that next step in our lives. So that's at bootcampaign.org. Bootcampaign.org. Thank you guys for everything you've done here today on the podcast and to protect us. <laughs> also, if you'd like to find some all-American apparel, supporting yes, disabled um, veterans. 100% American-made apparel, OscarMike.org. We are we're a 100% American-made, veteran-owned apparel company out of Marengo, Illinois. We also have a nonprofit organization called the Oscar Mike Foundation, which is dedicated to keeping injured veterans living an active lifestyle. One of the biggest weeks we've had was this last week. Week, we had five female veterans, which is huge for us, into the compound and doing their thing. And, you know, it, it was amazing to see all those ladies just kicking ass and, and doing what they do, and just helping us continue our mission, man. That's great. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Thanks brother. brother. Awesome. Thank you. And I think you guys need some more beer, so go have some more. Always. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers, guys. All right, guys. <laughs> Tap Takeover Podcast. Alex here with Jesus, and we are speaking with James Meyer from Zoom Beer Brewing. All right, so tell us about Zoom Beer. We're really excited to uh, come across you guys today. You guys have a fantastic double IPA, a really interesting uh, Orange Dream IPA. Tell us a little bit about the brewery. All right, so we are an innovative craft brewery. We've been around for about four years. We're giving it our all, guys. We're trying everything in our power to make the consumer a happy camper. Right now, today, we're pouring a orange milkshake IPA. Me and my other brewer, Matthew, came up with our first original recipe, double IPA. It's a West Coast traditional. Super hoppy. It's big. It's so bitter. What is the name on that? It's not. It's definitely not Fuckboy. It's Fuckboy. Uh, it's Fuckboy. It's okay. Fuckboy. <laughs> If you read the bottle, it is a term of endearment. Right, the bottle I- actually says, Fuckboy can be an affectionate name. Our brewers, James and Matt, really wanted a bitter, hoppy West Coast IPA. Our boss, Larry, says all the time, you did it, fuckboy. So, so we've got a really nice West Coast IPA. We've got a really fun milkshake style. You guys used a little lactose, a little orange peel. Tell no us orange peel. There's no actually orange peel. Okay. no oranges were used in this beer at all. All of the orange flavor comes from actual hop profile. Okay, so, so what what kind of hop are you guys using to approximate that that orange flavor in the Orange Dream Zoom beer? So we're using a Zaka, Mandarina, Pacifica, and Amarillo. Uh, we're also doing a bunch of test beers at the moment. We've got another New England coming out in the next couple weeks. Just did our tat, test batch of that. Sold out in a day. We've also been recently messing around with sours. It's a style that you either are gonna love or hate. The last batch we did was a bramble, which was a blackberry, raspberry, blueberry. The one before that was a pineapple mango. Again, this is definitely up in the works. We're trying our hardest at the moment. I feel we're doing a pretty good job. So I'm uh, I'm pouring the uh, the fuck boy right now, so we can all give a. I'm drinking the fuck boy. Give a little taste. Okay, Jesus already yeah. has it. Yeah. What do you, you tell, think, sir? Tell us about that fuckboy flavor to me it tastes like a good classic ipa it's got that, right. that happiness right it's not too much uh, in your face it doesn't have that too much of a bitter aftertaste good if you were to look at the definition of an ipa how we thought of ipas five six years ago this is it right not to go into the rabbit hole but ipas have become you know juicy the new right. england everything and- but this is hoppy but not punch you in the face hop so you the know? idea behind this beer was New England's right now are getting shoved down your throat. As a consumer, they're getting shoved down your throat. Yeah. It's sad because, you know what, people forget what a real IPA is supposed to taste like. So that was our idea behind our first beer is we wanted to show what a real IPA was. We have our orange dreams. We're working on other New England's. Uh, The fuck boy, pretty fucking good. As far as a West Coast style, it does not taste like that 7.2%. It actually tastes a lot lower. This batch may, just maybe, fellas, maybe a little bit higher than 7. Okay, that's breaking news. Uh (laughs) This one might be a little bit higher. The uh, 6.5% on the Orange Dreams is just right. It's just right. There's, it didn't need to be less. It didn't need to be more. It's, uh, it's perfectly flavored. 
for the hops that you're using, the little bit of lactose. Well, we need to really give a shout out. We need to give a shout out to Nader from Beer Bazaar from Haynesville. It's a bottle shop. That is actually Nader's original recipe. Wow. So Larry and Nader had been working on that for a while. It took a little bit, but I think we finally dialed it in. And uh, I, I agree. I think it's drinking fantastic right now. Well, hey, we really appreciate you sitting down with us. We hope to come by and, you know, get a full interview with you guys at some point, maybe next year or so. Yeah, absolutely. But absolutely, this is this is good beer that should be on everybody's radar. Thanks, gents. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Check out Thank Zoom you. Beer. Yeah, Zoom Beer. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. We are back. Tap Takeover Podcast here at Antioch Wine and Liquors. This is Jesus along with Alex, and we are with a very special guest. Introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. Paul. I'm from Half Day Brewing Company. We're out of Lincolnshire, Illinois. Here we are pouring some beers. It's a nice little Saturday. So before we get uh, into your involvement with Antioch, you brought us a little something, right, to taste? That's right. So the, what you guys are drinking right now is our Crimson Nectar. It's our Blackberry Berliner Weiss. It's uh, actually our last... Uh, Newest release, I should say. Nice and tart. Nice little kind of doughy finish to it. A little bready. Uh, almost smacks a little bit of a Belgian in a way. That's that's a really nice beer. I mean, we're, we've been doing a lot of uh, live tastings here today. This one might, might be one of my favorites. This is, nice. This is a really nice Berliner Weiss. What, what gives it that doughy aspect? Because uh, there is a little... Uh, There's a like, lot of mouthfeel to Like a to little this. substance. Oh, yeah. A little mouthfeel Exactly. So you're kind of getting the combination of two row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we almost kind of started off as you would, like you would start off a Belgian. So kind of, a, you know, the same kind of grains. And that's really about how I think where that comes from, in all honesty. And then it's kettle soured, and then uh, this blackberry puree in the end. Nice. Nothing, nothing too crazy with that one. Well, tell us about your involvement with Antioch. How long have you been supporting this event? Well, actually, this is our first time here. We are about to start launching cans, so we're going to have a package coming out really soon. Uh, so I uh, came up here kind of on a sales call, say, hey, you know, you guys want to try us out, get some cans up here. And they're like, yeah, hey, would you want to do a tent event, uh, beer tasting? I said, well, yeah, why not? <laughs> and so here I am. We we'll should have cans out probably in about a month, month and a half. And how far do you do distribute? You're not in Wisconsin yet. No, we are actually uh, in Lake County. We're in Lincolnshire, so we distribute in Lake County currently, draft only. And then also Cook County, we have some dis- distribution out there as well. Tell us about the brewery. First time coming in for some of our listeners, what uh, what can they expect? So first time coming in, we uh, took over a facility that was another brewery beforehand. They were called Flatlanders. Building sat vacant for about six years or so. We came in. So not only is it a brewery, but we got a full restaurant as well. And we also have guest taps, full bar. Our beers change seasonally, but our cores are our Big Sky Steam Beer. It's a California Common. Our Chieftain Session IPA, Frozen Tundra, which is our awesome American IPA, and then our Iron Horse Porter, which is a coffee-infused porter. Otherwise, you know, it changes seasonally. We get our Warrior Paint, which is our Imperial Coffee Stout, comes out in stout season. We do a barrel-aged version as well. Our Bear Tracks is our Dark Belgian Quad. Again, also do a barrel-aged version. She actually should be out in about two months. We got our Three Fires, our Belgian Triple. We got our Meridian Wit, which is our Wit. And it just kind of keeps ever increasing you know more recipes we start getting crazy or tinkering and something new pops out every once in a while so how many events do you do besides this one throughout the year we do some of the big ones in the area we do like bug the beer under glass we do gray's lake usually we do shop with the cops like in hoffman schaumburg and then kind of whatever else we've done i think gray's lake lake county bug we've done dirty nellies a couple times in palatine it all kind of depends on who's available and who hasn't had too many quality control samples in the brewery <laughs> So you're all over the place in the Chicago area. So what are your thoughts on like the trends in Chicago or, or like just craft beer in general? You know, Chicago is kind of a really interesting place for craft beer right now. We're definitely, you know, I think becoming a, a mecca for craft beer. The trends you're seeing a lot right now, you, the, the New England is still kind of, I think, the king of beers. But you're seeing sours, tarts really kind of come up and take and hold their own. Almost the trend, like what pumpkin beers was, should I say, maybe like six, seven, eight years uh, ago. Pump, pumpkin beer now, to me. <laughs> oh, I, well, uh, can we can we edit that out? Maybe. Nope. Nope. Okay. All time pumpkin beer guy. Yeah, we we do an episode every year called Hazus's Pumpkin Patch, where <laughs> I we, just uh, love, we get no, into the pumpkin beer. I don't want to go into the weeds, them. but I just love the the, the sweetness, the spice. I, I love everything about pumpkin beers. 
when they're done right. Some of them are a little maybe two centimeter or one way, but yep. don't get me wrong. I get it. No, let's I continue like with your journey. <laughs> but no, Chicago Land is is a great spot for beers. I mean, you know, we got a good history here. Some of it, you know, not great when you look at you know pre-prohibition times, but Chicago has always been a mecca, if not for beer, liquor, or food, and the craft beer industry in this area is exploding, especially in Lake County. There's countless ones out here. Well, we really appreciate you sitting down with us. We'd love to come down and uh, do a full interview. We talk about uh, some of the history behind you guys, some of the uh, the inspiration behind some of your beers. We'd, uh, we'd absolutely love to come down and uh, do a full interview with you. That'd be awesome, guys. Come down. Our uh, our chicken wings are also like really darn good. All right. Okay, we'll be there tomorrow. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, you sold it. <laughs> I won't. I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank cool. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. Uh, Cheers. Awesome. All right, Taft Takeover Podcast here with Alex and Jesus. End of the event. This is going to be our last interview for the evening. We, we have a really fun surprise. So we're sitting down with Rick, who we sat down with earlier to talk about the event. We're going to talk about how the event has ended, how it went this year. And also we have a special guest. We have Chris, who has been pouring us every single uh, special tapping today. He's made a, a special uh, a case of coming to bring all of those beers to us. So, uh, Chris, we owe you a special, special thank you. Hey, no all worries right, at all, man. All right. I'm just here to help out, you know. You guys, when you're working all day and you're sitting here interviewing everybody, you don't get the chance to grab all of the special tappings of the day. So, to introduce our, our last two pourings of the evening, we're going to go with the CBS, which has been aged at a perfect 55-degree cellar. It's going to be the oh, yeah. 2018 CBS. Amazing beer by Founders. We've done this one a couple of times on the podcast, but, you know, we haven't tried it this far out. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this beer is aged. Right after that, a first time for the podcast event, a utopia. Who knew? Who knew that it was still around? Who knew that Rick was going to bring this out? This is a complete surprise to us. We're getting pictures taken as we drink it because it's so rare. Uh, we're getting the Sam Adams 2017 Utopia. 2017. Yes. Rick, tell us about what you thought about the whole event. We're packing up right now. Guys are breaking down tables. It's insanity right now. Just yeah, I think it went well. I mean, we had about 165 people, which you never take it for granted, you know, having that kind of turnout. You hope people come out and have a great time, and that's what we do this for. So to get that turnout and people enjoy themselves, and we raised money for the, the boot campaign through Shiner. We raised uh, $500 plus for them as well. I think that's a win no matter what happens. So, yeah, I mean, overall, I think it was a great turnout. The weather was unbelievable. Uh, so, man, it was a win. That's and, enough. Uh, that's enough. Holy shit. <laughs> He's poor. I, I, think, I think that just enough was the CBS and pouring a full glass. I might get an ounce now. All right, let's try this. You guys want to yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's see shot. how cheers, this is everybody. aged. Yeah, yeah, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah, yeah dude, thank you. Really hey, appreciate thanks it. for having us. Oh, Tap takeover. You guys are awesome. Let's go. Oh, wow. Oh, man. This is held up. This is really held up. The sweetness is there. You get the barrel. I would say the sweetness has centered in on the beer. It is diffused in a little bit. The, the coffee is really speaking, although it should have died off, which is really impressive. I think we're the, in a good spot. We're a good spot, Alex. This, this should not be... The if coffee, you, chocolate flavors yeah. Yeah, are Yeah, temperature really, on this beer is good, too. Really I mean, it's intermingling. No, it's perfect it's temperature, good, but yeah. I think you, you don't age this anymore. Drink this now. And I'll tell you what, as we're speaking, Founders has come out and said this is the, the peak spot really? for, uh, for the CBS. So I, I, I tend to believe them. This, this feels like a peak spot. Oh, yeah, man. I don't, I, what I love I'm about this beer is impressions. many years ago, everybody wanted, like, people were trading anything to get this beer. And then they released it a second time. And when it first came out, it was super hot. And right now, you're right. It is at the perfect drinking point. Everybody should drink this beer right now before they decide to trade it or drink it. Like, drink it now. This is great. Yeah, definitely Absolutely. not hot. It's not hot anymore. No, no. 
Good sweetness, yeah. A little bit of maple in there, too. Yeah, you get. this is coming it's in. Very good, yeah. Like, all of the ingredients are intermingling, I, I would say, perfectly. I, you know, maybe this was better a month ago, but I, I would challenge you to, uh, to say that because it's coming in perfectly right now. Coming in here today and mm. having the solid non-fail stout as one of our specialized beers, one of our special tappings, I will say this one right now is better than the solid non-fail stout. Yeah. And the solid non-fail stout is aged about the same amount of time. It's just that those adjuncts are falling off way more rapidly than they are in the CBS. And that's I, I think that's a credit to founders and what they're able to do with their barrel-aged beers and, and the way that they're able to uh, to keep some of those flavors aging longer because they've been uh, aged for bourbon barrel aging. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've been doing it a long time. So I think they've perfected that process. You for know? sure. Yeah. No, and that non fail is really good though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's not good at all. It's a very good beer. Oh yeah, a lot it, of maple coming still through. I mean, that beer well. is fantastic, man. <laughs> Chris, getting back to you. If there's MVP trophy to be given out tonight, it's yours. Why? Because we were here doing podcasting, and you were bringing us all the beers tonight. All the good ones. Yeah, all the good ones. Plus all he the rated the Shiner raffle. We yeah. raised five hundred dollars. Yeah. Everything because Chris coordinated that as Chris, well. Chris, you did everything oh, tonight. Man. He's a jack of all trades. Can you tell MVP. us? MVP. Can you tell? Tonight. Can you tell us what exactly is that you do here? I, um, nothing. I. <laughs> Rick. Like I said, the jack of all trades. Anything Rick needed. He's a, a real of, good buddy of mine. So Rick is anything a friend of mine. That I needed. I, he's always helped me out with. So I am. I am a high school teacher. I. That's my trade. However, I. Beer is a hobby, and I am here just to help my buddy Rick. I love, I love what he does. I love the tasting. It's just, it's just a good time. So for me to come out here and just help him, that's, that's my job. I'm not an MVP. I just came to help. You're like LeBron, man. Yeah. You could give it to you every year. They just why. You know I'll what just I come mean? help. It's out. Like we yeah. know. We know. Hey, you're right. You're so, right. Rick. So how many <laughs> years? This is my tasting. I do this stuff. It's. Well, no, I just yeah. mean you could give it to every year. You just you don't want the credit. You're like it's, listen. It's fun. Yeah. Year, but no, this is what I do. I'm just man. here to help this out. I, I am. I am a. I'm a huge craft beer fan. I support so many local breweries. I'm just here to have fun. Yeah. yeah. So how many years have you done this? I have been helping Rick, and. This particular tasting for five, six years? Yeah, almost as long as it's been going wow. on. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, he's a big part of it growing year, into so what it is. Chris is 100% yeah. a big part, integral part of growing it into what it yeah, is. Yeah, when uh, sure. when Alex and I came here and you, you're snapping pictures, doing all this stuff, bringing the beer, I just thought you were just an employee. Yeah. No. no. Rick asked me, he's like, hey, can you come, maybe take some pictures, maybe help pour some beers, you know, whatever, whatever we need. And you know, Rick knows I'm here for him. Whatever, I'm just, I'm just a friend. So, so thank you. Uh, speaking about this event today, so Chris and Rick, what, uh, what sort of beers really stuck out to you? I was walking around trying a whole bunch of things. Obviously, <laughs> um, we had a whole bunch of rare draft pours that were absolutely phenomenal. The breakfast out from Maplewood, or the breakfast sour from Maplewood, was absolutely amazing. That's one of the, yeah, yeah that's one of the big yeah, ones. People were talking about that a lot because. Everyone was trying to guess which fruit was in the sour, and it was boysenberry. Was New that the, for everybody. That's the one that you thought was raspberry. Yeah. Was that everyone, the collective Everyone arts? was yeah, trying to guess arts. it. Yeah. 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 And um, it was, it was, it was awesome. I thought raspberry. Yeah. I, I honestly thought it was the raspberry. Arts, it was until uh, we came it on and said it was sour. boysenberry. It was, yeah. It was boysenberry. But yeah, there were a lot of great beers here today. I mean, it's really difficult to pick which one was the absolute best. So, yeah. Rick, you deal with these people on a daily yeah. basis. You get to try the best of the best. I and mean, you have the first crack at it. Sometimes. What uh, What was your fun, fun stuff today, to try? Today, the yeah. beer uh, It's tough. You know, I'm pretty busy, so running around to, to try everything. I definitely didn't get a chance to try everything. Uh, so it was probably, I literally probably sample, which I'll sample more later, probably six or seven beers throughout the day. You know, I tried that Founders Barrel Runner. I thought that was good. There was definitely a ton of rum. It was boozy. Uh, I liked it. You know, I thought that uh, the rum came through pretty good. But uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I'm busy out here all day. So yeah. trying beers, I literally will grab a beer sometimes, uh, take one sip, and then somebody pulls me one direction. I set it down and I can't remember what it was. I probably did that 15 or 20 times today where somebody oh, handed me a beer. Yeah, yeah. So again, like Chris was saying, to narrow it down, it's tough because I don't get to try everything. So I couldn't say I had them all to pick a winner. Try to make a, a, a good variety of local stuff, you know, things people haven't had, new breweries, breweries that haven't even opened up yet, 
you know, for people to try. Yeah. Um, and that's what I try to do, and it is a lot of work for me that day. That's why, like, again, like Chris was saying, we're going to try some Utopias here and, and, and have I, a good time. I'll tell you what, it, it speaks to the amount of work that goes into an event like this. You know, even uh, when you're talking about 150 to 170 people coming out, it, there's a lot of work that goes into that. We really pro applaud you guys for uh, the amount of work that you're putting in, bringing the, the good breweries out, bringing not just volunteers to pour the beers, but actual brewery reps. So we get to talk to people who are involved with the brewing process. Yep. Yeah, we kind of touched on that earlier. I think that's the key. You want if, When you walk up to a table, you want to talk to somebody that knows about the beer. You know, if it's somebody that's just pouring it, they just pour your beer, and then that's all they're doing, really. And you ask them a question, they might not know. You have the brewery rep there, oh, sure. then they can answer that question for you. You know, and if they can't, they're probably going to be pretty upset they can't. And they're going to find out and probably get your information <laughs> and, and get and get to you with that, email you or whatever, because yeah, that's don't. what they do. So, yeah, you want to have the best the best beer, the, you know, local stuff with the brewery reps here to, to put it all together into a fun event for our customers. we got to move on to the next beer. Oh, yeah, all for right. sure, for let's, sure. Let's close this let's baby do it. out. Sam Adams <laughs> Utopias. Chris has had every year. I think he has purchased every year for the oh, last so how many are, years? Oh, time well, out. Why aren't we friends out. with Chris? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. No, you are now. <laughs> yeah, let's so, drink this. So it's before we get into this, and you want to be his friend because he's very the, generous with him too. So Chris, he'll bring before, him around and he'll pour you samples. Of so them Chris, all. before we get into this, you're the one who has the background in it. Tell us a little bit about what is in this vessel, which is looks like an old school copper kettle. It is. Well, they made this bottle to look like an old school copper kettle, and it's a Sam Adams Utopius. So they they made this beer with the intention of having just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing in your face. Twenty percent alcohol. Oh shit! Really? It's yeah. it's it's a beer. It's almost thirty percent. It so it's a barrel it's like, aged. It's, like, it's a. It Just is. It's alcohol. been aged in so many different barrels, and it's really hard to describe for someone who hasn't tried it yet. So the okay. fact that this is the first for this podcast, I. I really just want to see your guys' reactions yeah. to it. I mean, I've had it multiple times. Jesus. You're gonna get raisin. You're gonna yeah. get bourbon. You're gonna get rum. Cognac, you're gonna, sherry, you're gonna get cognac. like it's a port sherry cognac type thing. Yeah. The thing that's about to happen is <laughs> the first time I tried this beer, I sat there in silence for about a minute, just taking everything in. I'm so excited for you guys okay. right now. It's need, not even. Yeah, funny. they haven't had it. I know. I know. Oh, it's, it's honestly. Well, so it's, it's a blend aged. of beers that were aged 20 years in barrels. Buffalo uh, Trace is where they get the majority of their barrels years from. Years too. And, and so a what should we do right now? Oh yeah, 20 plus years to yeah. some yeah. new aged beers. I mean, it's a blend of so many things. And Let's they get have it. To, and they, they, have they only to make use. about 12 to 14,000 every two years. Yeah. There's only 12 to 14,000 bottles total. Chris, it's appropriate that you pour you pour this every two years. But the fun part is, is you know. Because it's a beer. This is a beer. You're it's about to taste this, and you're going to think, like, wow, this is a cognac or a whiskey. or this, It drinks more like a cognac or a sherry, actually. It's a beer. They use, I'm pretty sure, champagne yeast to get the alcohol content as high as they do. Yeah, I think there's a variety of yeast. I would say you'd have to talk to the brewmaster to find out exactly what's in that. Because there's probably not many people in this world that tell you everything that goes into Don't making that beer. Don't use a plastic That's cup. how crazy that there. beer is. No plastic. There's probably things Just that aren't even it, listed. Sure. So we want to thank you guys both. Let's get yeah. your first impressions. What, uh, For sure, what I will tell tasting? you this though. We got two bottles here in the store. One went to our bar, which is the one we're drinking right now and we're finishing it. The other one was sold to Chris. So he personally has one of the bottles. So he, that's how good of a customer he is, a friend and somebody who helps out here so he's the only one that got to buy the the, the bottle of utopias that we had here for sale and it's gone <laughs> um we drank it i throw myself a birthday party every year and we uncap a bottle of utopias and we drink it and rick always comes to my party and it's a fun day. It's a great way to celebrate. It's pretty much a whale beer tasting. Yeah, is what it is. You, you have to be beer, you have to be invited to my party, <coughs> and people show up, and you have to come with a bottle that's. It sounds oh, like yeah, the invited, tap. Man. It sounds Listen, like the tap takeover guy are gonna be at my fortieth birthday party coming up. Oh here. shit! Oh shit! That's yeah. a big one. So That's you have one. to bring something absolutely amazing. But Utopia Solutions shows we'll up. We'll bring new glares. Yeah, it's, it's uh, forty, so it's gonna be in Vegas too. So you guys. No, I'm what? thinking Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was right, kind of hoping Kenosha, <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> or <laughs> or maybe we'll just do it right here in Gurney at Timothy O Tools, or we'll do it over at Only Child. Only Child because Only Child has hosted my past two years 
and I absolutely love those guys. So let's do it there again. Yeah, that's great. So, well, I'll tell you so, what, so before Chris, that, oh. before that happens, let's uh, let's do a little yeah. uh, toast, cheers. Uh, cheers. a little cheers. Cheers to everybody. To, uh, to an amazing beer. Chris, you've been down this road. But compared this to the one you had. So every year is similar. You're gonna get tons of sweetness. You're gonna get raisin. You're gonna get a little bit of bourbon, a little bit of rum. Every year is a little bit different. So right now you're drinking 2017, so it's gonna be hot. If you drink a 2011. Yeah, mm, mine was 07. 2007. Yeah. It's gonna be so smooth. You're not gonna get any of that burn, but you're gonna have the same characteristics. You're gonna have the raisin. You're gonna have the bourbon. You're gonna have the rum. All of that's gonna be there. The sugar. Yeah, it's that, great. that bite on the finish kind of fades off as it ages. It's and it's just so smooth. For me as a port fan, this has a lot of characteristics of a port wine. Yeah. Very high in alcohol and it has that same raisin. Like, yeah. You can also compare it to a very high end sherry. Maybe. What's interesting is that it's not a uh, an imperial stout, which you would typically age in a barrel for a number of years. This is a quad. This is a quad which uh, picks up a number of those, like you said, those raisin flavors, those those uh, caramel, you know, almost uh, butterscotch flavors, uh, but like to the nth degree, like to the, the highest degree that it could possibly pick up those flavors. After 24 months in a, in a fucking barrel, you're, you're talking about just crazy amounts of flavors and and adjuncts and you know everything and they do it in multiple doing. barrels oh yeah that's yeah. the fun yeah. part I mean, it's, they're blending the, everything the, it's, it's unreal the scope of it is what i love the, you know, the, size of the, the presentation too, to the presentation of cool. the uh, actual finished product also the barrel yeah the barrel is a beautiful thing yeah. Can, no they put a lot into that i'm like i'm saying the size of the brewery to be able to put out a beer like this but also I mean, they're kind of like a macro craft brewery. They put out like so much beer in a year, but still make something like this too. And you don't see that very often. Something that people look forward to yeah. every two years. Yeah. I mean, people will line up every favor that they have to try to grab a bottle of this beer. I used to get six or seven here in the store, and now I'm lucky to get one. And I said, it's going to go to the bar, man. I want people to try it. I want it to be at our bar, you know, our new tasting bar. And then I said, if I get another one, I'm going to sell it to you. You know, at regular retail, I'm going to sell it. And what did I do with it? And what did I do with it? You opened it. I right opened there. it. <laughs> that's, opened and it. we tried it. That's actually, that's we pretty cool, it. man. Yeah, I'm not cool. one of those guys that's going to be like, I'm going to be on a two-year waiting list to get a beer, to sit on it and do nothing with it. I drank it. What are you guys trying in this bottle? The very first impressions. What are you getting from this uh, from this beer? Because I'm getting a lot. There's, there's a lot of flavors going on. Yeah, like you said, I mean, everything. I think, for me, like, I, I call it raisiny goodness because that's what I get, man. I get so much raisin in this beer. Um, again, all of those same qualities of a port, sherry, cognac. You so know. this is your first Utopias? Yes. You will first. remember this forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This has been a, a fantastic event. We, Rick, thank you again for inviting us out to this to this event to get like a full coverage of uh, what what you guys do here down in Antioch, the number of beer reps that come down that are willing to represent for uh, for a special beer fest like this. Chris, <laughs> thank you again for for being you for pouring us all of the best beers, uh, all of the special tappings. We really appreciate that. Hey, like I said, you guys are sitting here doing podcasts. You don't get to go stand in line for the rare drafts, and that's what I'm here for. I want you guys to try the, all the fucking good stuff that happens man awesome yeah. well hey uh thank you guys for having us down uh this has been a fantastic event at antioch thank you again yeah Mark. thank yeah, you no so much. worries guys yeah. thank Cheers. you so yeah. much you guys actually had people waiting in line to sit with you guys so oh, that's shit. why this ran after the tasting so that's a pretty <laughs> cool thing man you guys did a fantastic job man. Yeah. i was really impressed thank you i had a ton of fun myself here with you guys you so guys have a following I, you really do <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you All so right. much. Oh, seriously, man. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad you guys came out, and let's do it again next year. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been another solid non-field production. Yeah.